What's up everyone and welcome to another episode of Kelvin's Garage. So today we're going to go over replacement of the control arms. Now I had a little bit of trouble filming this video because I had done one of the sides and then halfway through that I realized the tool needed some modifying. And then another third of the way from there I realized that I ran out of battery. Okay so in this video we're going to do the left hand side in its completion and the right hand side replacement of the control arm is exactly the same just on the right hand side. Enjoy! Hi everybody, today we're going to be looking at my 2006 Honda Civic. Here it is. The car is pretty old by now so what happens is that the steering wheel and suspension just feels kind of loose. We're going to get to the bottom of this and we're going to look at the control arms. Now what happened is that over time those rubber bushings on the control arms, they start to get really worn out. So if we take a look down here, yep, there is the control arm. And the one up front is actually the one that gets really loose and the rubber around it starts to wear out. But first, before we do that, what I want to show you is a diagram that I downloaded online. Now this is from the website civic.hondafitjazz.com slash manual2.html. And basically what this website shows is it allows for you to get the images of uh, the suspension parts from the official Honda manual. And from there what I've done is I've downloaded the, the images of the suspension area here is the first one showing where the sway bar link uh, locks in and it also shows you the torque settings that you'll need for when you put this thing back together. Okay, the second image here shows basically the control arm and the two main bolts that tie the control arm into the frame. This third image here shows the lock nut that basically connects the, the steering knuckle to the wheel. So we can see here, here's the control arm and here is the ball joint and what we need to do is we need to get a ball joint separator to take the uh, ball joint off. This is a special tool that Honda sells. Fortunately we have the generic replacement that we bought from Harbor Freight and I'll show you that later on. But here we can also see how the, how the nut goes over and how there's a cotter pin that basically locks in the nut as well as the torque settings for that nut shown here. Here is the suspension. Here's the strut. Here's the part we're going to replace. We need to undo this bolt down here. We need to do uh, undo this bolt over here. Okay, actually it's better to see from this side here. We need to undo the bolt on the ball joint down there. Okay, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first things first is we're gonna try to make this a little bit safer. Okay, so we have one jack right under there, that mounting point. I'm gonna put a second jack right here on this tow hook mounting point. So that will make this really, really secure for us. If you take a look at the old rubber here, it's literally just tearing off. We'll take this off and we'll, we'll, we'll get a better look in a second. Okay, next we're going to take our second jack. Now these jacks are pretty inexpensive. Uh, I think back then they used to cost about $20 a piece. Maybe it's $25 or $30 at the most right now. So we'll Get our second jack, and if you can afford one, please buy one. We'll take the second jack, move it into place, okay? And then we are going to jack it up just ever so slightly to give you some extra support on the front end of the vehicle. So we'll place, uh, we'll position the, uh, the jack head uh, right on the tow hook, okay? So again, this is not to lift the car. 
Okay, our main jack is already doing that. This is just to lift it slightly to get that extra support. Okay, so we don't want to go all the way with this. Just a little bit uh, to where the car just has a little bit of extra support on the front side. So now that we've got that secured for extra safety, what we're going to do now is we're going to take off the strut bolts. Now one of the important reasons why we want to do that is because we're going to, going to be basically wrestling with this knuckle the whole time. And the strut is spring loaded obviously, so we don't want to load on the knuckle while we're wrestling around with it. So we're going to disconnect the brake line, this uh, wheel sensor here, and the two bolts for the strut. And we're going to basically just push it aside a little bit so that we can more easily uh, manipulate the knuckle uh, and undo the bolts so that it comes off fairly easily. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the strut. The I'm sorry, the sway bar link here. And we're going to take off the bolts underneath here that hold the, the sway bar in place. This sway bar mounting point will be loosened as well. And that will also help us to basically wiggle out the sway bar away from the control arm. Put our breaker bar with a 19 on this end. Once it's broken off, we can just use our ratchet. Okay, so that's the first one. Okay. So actually, I forgot to take off these two, so let me do this first. This one's really easy, the wheel sensor. I'm just gonna hit this with my finger and just pinch that off. Okay, so that way it doesn't get caught when I start moving this strut around. And the second thing is the brake line. So just take a 12 millimeter and here we go. <laughs> take a 12 millimeter. Okay. that hanging like that. We can put this back in just so that we don't lose it 12 millimeter. If we can kind of give it a good knock with the hammer. Get that off. Okay. It should come off. I can lift this a little bit with my knee. Get this off here. Tension's already releasing from the knuckle here. You can see the strut is going to start to push out. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move the strut away so it doesn't get in the way of the knuckle area. And just like that. Just like that. Okay, so this is the proper angle and position that the strut, the knuckle, the brake line and the wheel sensor cable should be sitting at so that you have the freedom to undo the control arm, the sway bar link, the control arm, and the uh, and that one pesky bolt down here for the ball joint. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this right here. This is the sway bar link bolt and you can see here that it's also got an allen key in the middle of it, of the bolt side, and then we have this nut over here. So what happens is that we can't simply just turn the nut because then the this bolt which goes inside the the uh, link will just spin around so we need to hold this in place with the allen key and then undo this now I have this set of tools here that I bought from Lowe's quite some time ago and what these tools are are 
there are these uh, sockets that have holes straight through the middle of them and what happens is that this is a set that is used in conjunction with this ratcheting wrench so in other words I can use this ratcheting wrench along with one of these sockets to basically go around the bolt hold the bolt in there with an allen key wrench and then just go at it this makes it much faster and much more convenient so I highly recommend these okay so now we've got our little setup here we've got the 17 millimeter over the sway bar link nut okay and this is going to go over like that the ratcheting wrench and we have our number five allen key so we'll hold it this way and we're gonna go at it here we go There's the brake. The rest is easy peasy. And you can see the ratcheting wrench makes quick work of this nut here. Now we can take off the sway bar link. We can kind of maneuver this out of here. Let's get our mallet, pop this out. Okay, here we go. All right. Oops, hit the camera. Okay, but you can see here now that this has been unlocked, the control arm is free to move more or less. Now this brings us to our third jack. Now this is probably not necessary, but what I like to do is I use it to give this thing some support while we while we maneuver it in and out, the control arm. So what I'll do is I'll jack it up right here right underneath the old ball joint or actually right here where the bolts are I'm position this so that it sits right under here okay. and this gives it some support now you see okay now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to undo the sway bar uh, bushing mount right here what that will allow me to do is push the entire sway bar through this hole in the control arm. All right, let's get this one off too. We got one of them. Okay, and that's it. We'll hold this a little bit while it drops. Now this sway bar bushing here I replaced maybe a year ago. I replaced it with Moog parts. I think Moog parts are pretty good. Uh, they seem to have been okay for the last year. Definitely better than the original over 10 year old part, but yeah, they're fairly inexpensive and you can get them almost anywhere. Okay, let's take this off. And now you can see that the sway bar is just going to drop. And basically I'll have a lot of degrees of freedom. And now it's still held on on the other side and I did the other side uh, yesterday. But it's still held on the other side. Here we're just going to maneuver it out of the way. Okay, so there it is. And we're going to more or less take this out of the picture. Just like that. Just like that. Okay. Now we're going to take off the main bolts of the control arm. So the one right under here. That one right there. And then we're going to work a little bit on the one on the ball, on the ball joint. You can see right here, that's that one, the big one, and then the medium one. So let's do it. The breaker bar and use our 17. And that's it, it's broken.
Now we'll use our ratchet to finish the job. Now one of the things we want to do is because this is on the support here, on the jack, what we can do is we can give it a little less stress right here by raising this knuckle. Okay, we'll raise the knuckle just a little bit. Like so. Okay, we can see the stress is coming off of this joint right here. Okay. And we'll continue with the unbolting. And now, this normally is easier to get on the other side. Because over here, what do we have? We've got the transmission. Okay, we've got the transmission. So it's a little bit hard to access this bolt, and let's see if we can get it. Okay. There we go, let's see if we can get this. We can move the knuckle out of the way. Like I said, it would be valuable to do. Okay, here we go. Okay, we got it. Okay, so what we did is we moved the knuckle a little bit out of the way. You see, there's a lot of play here. We have a lot of flexibility here. Okay, just because we undid the strut. Okay, the strut stays in its place, but the knuckle here is free to move. Okay, now with that uh, capability, we can move that out of the way and we can go at it with our breaker bar. Okay. We had already just done this, but I just wanted to show you again that that's how we are able to access the able to access the, the bolt down here. Okay, so that's what, that's what we did. Okay, take the bolt out, and there we go. Okay, now here comes the hard part. We're going to undo the bowl joint right here. Okay, the bowl joint right here. Okay, well now what's that gonna take? Well, first we're going to reposition the knuckle. Okay, and then there's a little pin here, a little cotter pin. We have to undo that. Now one of the things that may help is if we turn the steering wheel. If we turn the steering wheel, we can point the brake caliper outwards and then we have better access to the ball joint over here. You want to do it from this end because on the other side, the back side of this over here, we have the tie rod and the tie rod is going to get in the way of us manipulating and accessing that, that bolt. Okay, now we can see the ball joint in all its glory right here. Okay, and if you look carefully, we've got the nut and the cotter pin. The cotter pin goes out pretty easily, but it's installed a certain way where it's been bent in to hook the nut. Now this nut is special, it's got these little uh, notches on top of it, these little segments here. What that does is it allows the cotter pin to fit in there and also grip it so that in the case of an emergency, let's say this pops off or loosens, the cotter pin will still hold that nut in there so your car won't steer uncontrollably and you'll live to tell about it another day. So now we're gonna take off the cotter pin basically, take it, Take our pliers and just pull off that hooked area off and pull the whole thing off. Oops. Okay, pull the whole thing off. Here we go. Okay, here we go. And that's what it looks like. And this is the cotter pin. We can see it goes in through the bolt and has this little hook here. And that helps it to stay on there. So when we get our new cotter pin, we're going to bend it in the same way. So we can also hook on the nut. Okay, the next thing to do is to take off this nut. Now this nut is kind of a challenge because what happens is that when we unscrew this, it will end up hitting this, the CV joint. So we're going to have to do it in a clever way. We'll have to take this off, loosen it just a little bit. Our ball joint separator tool, we'll have to insert it in here and then pop this off basically this part from the ball joint uh, bolt okay. this is the 19 
loose than that. Okay, it's loose now. Okay, we can see here that you see it can come off. Let's see if we can come off entirely. If it can come off entirely, we're in good shape. Okay, but you see it kind of hits the bottom of the CV joint. But look, we got it off. All right, we're in good shape. The other side was a little more difficult. We couldn't get this cleanly off. Okay, but now what we'll do is we're going to take this uh, ball joint separator tool and pop this off. Okay, so this is the ball joint separator tool. I bought this from Harbor Freight. It's not expensive, but I don't remember exactly how much it costed. And basically it's a three-quarter forged ball joint separator. Okay, and there's three pieces in here. Um, this is Pittsburgh, which is Harbor Freight, a brand of Harbor Freight's item 99849. Okay. And now you can't use it straight out of the box, unfortunately. Okay, this is kind of the closest equivalent to the official Honda tool. Uh, and you can't use it straight out of the box. So what I had to do, I had to modify it. Okay, so here are the three pieces. We've got, actually there's four pieces technically. Okay, we've got this part right here, the bottom part. And this will slip under the ball joint. That's the actual point where it separates. Now this part goes on top and this, what this does is this um, puts pressure on the top of the bolt and that allows us to get leverage uh, on the separation force uh, on the ball joint. This pin here holds this in place. Okay, once I put it in you'll see, be able to see that it pivots on this. Okay. Now there's two settings here. Make sure you use the upper setting for, for the Honda. Uh, and some vehicles may use the lower setting so that it pivots a little bit lower. There's less distance between these two points here. And finally, there's th this third piece here. So what's gonna happen is that this is going to be screwed in here and this is what gives us our, our mechanical leverage. Okay, so this will go right in here. And then as this is in the ball joint portion of this, and as you screw this bolt, it will put pressure and push down on the top bolt of the ball joint. Now, out of the box, I mentioned that you just can't use this out of the box for Hondas. Uh, and why not? Well, let's take a look here. The opening here actually is too small out of the box. So what I had to do is I had to take a, a grinder and basically widen this just a little bit. Just, uh, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch or so. Just to give it a little bit more width here so it can fit in the ball joint. Okay, so let's take a look at the assembly. Basically, like I said, this is going to slip in here. Okay, let's see if we can see that. This is going to slip in the ball joint area right here. Okay, and this is going to hit the top of that bolt right just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to screw in this bolt. Okay, so if we take a close look at what I have here. So this is kind of set to the beginning of tension or pressure on this arm right here okay the arm over here goes around the bolt here like so you can see that right there okay and then finally this separation point right here you get a better angle the separation point right here I've slipped in that little fork slipped in that little fork right here okay slipped in the fork right here now it's gonna separate this from the bottom Okay, now we're going to go for it. 19 on this. And we will tighten this until it pops. And we're doing a separator. is working its magic. It's going to pop soon. Wait for it. There we go, okay. We're going to let this down and we're going to undo the two nuts and the bolt that connects the control arm to the ball joint. And that will allow us to more easily wiggle the control arm out. So let me let this down.
finally the third one which is in the middle here that's the the bolt let me move this out of the way just a tad easier with our mallet this is really how do we maneuver these components and get them out with the least possible effort okay so I'm gonna resupport this ball joint with the jack so we don't have this dangling here okay there we go okay now we can just pull the control arm out just like that right out. Okay, there's the control arm. Let me take the ball joint off because we have a new ball joint on our new control arm. Just lift this off. There it goes, falls right off. Okay, and we're going to just put the jack under this so that it's not dangling by its own weight. Okay, here we go. Okay, and we're good. Here's the ball joint. Okay, let's take a look at the new part versus the old part. So this is the new replacement part. I bought it, uh, I believe I bought it from Rock Auto, one of my favorite uh, auto parts online uh, stores. Now I think it's better than Amazon. I know Amazon sells auto parts now too but I still think it's better than Amazon even though the shipping is not free because sometimes when you buy auto parts from Amazon the seller, which is not Amazon regulated sometimes sends you the wrong part so this is the new part and this is the old part okay we can see here that the new part already has a new ball joint on it already has a new nut also comes with a new cotter pin all we need to do is make sure we take off this rubber piece here that protects the, the ball joint Okay, take that off. Okay, here's the original. Okay, ball joint, nut. Okay, and here's the pin. What we need to do is we need to modify our pin, our straight pin, to look similar to the original pin so that once it's inserted, it can go around the nut. Once the nut is like this, the pin can just go right in come around and hook the other side of the nut here so we'll do that and we'll do a little test fit as well but basically there it is side by side let me come around this way side by side okay now this part is a Moog part M-O-O-G uh, I don't know if I mentioned that but I find them to be pretty decent okay, there's a part number RK620383 for the driver side now it is made in China but Overall, it looks to be a pretty good replacement. So look at the bushings here, nice and beefy. Okay, compared to the old one, which is clearly uh, had its had its best days behind it. Okay, but the original has a gap here. Is intended to have a gap between the center, uh, the bushing uh, center, and the edge of it. Okay, we can see here air basically whereas the replacement part 
We'll actually have some rubber in there. Okay, so what I've done here is I've modified the cotter pin uh, in such a way where, and I've test fitted it in such a way where you see it, it kind of locks the nut into place. So I'm gonna take it off and show you what I did. I actually, instead of using the shorter end on the original and made it do this little arc here, I used the longer end uh, because it was a little bit better for this nut to go all the way around and in like that. But this is the way it's supposed to sit when it's in the final install. And here it is again, I just slipped it more or less off the top. I just pried this part off the top, pulled it out. And now this cotter pin is ready to be assembled along with this. Before we install the new control arm, what we need to do is we need to put some grease. So make sure you put sufficient grease around the ball joint here, this area right here, which will essentially be press fit into the knuckle and also around these areas as well. This will help it go in much, much more smoothly and without grease. So use ball joint grease or use some kind of synthetic grease. Either one should probably do the job well, right here, right here, so that it slips in pretty well. Okay, let's get some of this grease on here. nice and thick on this one. Put some over here and over here and we'll just spread it all around with our finger. This should help it install a little bit more easily because we have to wedge it in between those mounting points. Now I'm also going to put a little grease here at the mounting point here. I've already done this one a little bit. Using a little different grease probably doesn't matter too much. So right here and up top there. That way it slides in just a little bit easier. Okay. And also on that bolt here, the inside of right there. Okay and on the other side as well, right here. Now we're going to attempt the install. Okay, we're gonna to try to stick the control arm in there and in there. It might take a little bit of wrestling, but we'll see how it goes. So this is where it comes in handy that I move the sway bar bolt out of the way. And you see here I'm going to attempt to simultaneously get it in there, in there, and right down here. Okay. keep cranking this up higher and higher that will actually allow the top two mounting points to sit fairly well where they're supposed to go I'm gonna try to kick this in there I'm gonna try to kick this in there okay so after fighting with this for a while I finally got this one in okay this was kind of in position here this side is a little bit better than before but not too much I think the trick was to get the front side in first and then we can get this one in. All right, we were able to get the front in. Having some trouble here, make sure it's against the threaded part of the body. Okay, 
okay, so we tightened that one, but we didn't torque it down yet. And we'll do the second bolt before we do any torque. Actually, we'll do all three before we do any torque on any of them. So that's the one we're gonna go for next. It, it's not really sitting quite in there. We'll have to do some manhandling. Okay, sometimes it's really hard to get the hole on that one to align with the hole here. So I have a pry bar here, wrapped it in fabric for safety. But basically it allows me to make minor adjustments up and down until I get the hole just right. Okay, so it got kind of dark, but I was able to get everything in place without being torqued yet. So I was able to get that bolt in, that bolt in over there. And I temporarily put these two on to hold the knuckle in place. And I was able to get the the ball joint not in place so what we're going to do now is we're going to torque down everything torque down everything uh, but before we do that we're going to actually lift the we're going to lift the control arm so that the car is sitting on the strut uh, the weight of the car sitting on the strut what that'll do is it'll more or less put the put the suspension uh, loaded more or less uh, as if it were really under operation and that's the best condition under which to tighten all the nuts and bolts. One more thing that I need to do also is put in the sway bar link and just kind of put it in its place so that everything fits okay when I tighten down everything. We have our nifty electronic torque gauge uh, that we can put onto any ratchet or breaker bar. We're going to use that to set the torque. So if we check our reference again, we've got 61 pound-feet of torque on that one. That front uh, upward pointing bolt. And then we have 47 on that one, on the inside one. Okay? And then for the ball joint, we've got right here, that nut is 51 to 58 pound-feet. And we have 67 on the strut uh, mounting bolts. Alright, tighten down these strut mount bolts. Okay, got those two on. Now one more thing is to get the wheel sensor clip and the brake line back on there. Remember to put the sway bar mounting bracket bolts back on. Okay, don't forget to put the ball joint bolt back on. It's right here. Got my big light going on. There's the pin. Let's stick it through here. And voila! Okay, we tightened the ball just a little bit more. Now it should go in without a hitch. Okay, there it goes. All right. See it coming out of the other end there? Okay. Should be able to get in there. Okay, just like that. Just like that. Now we hook the other side. We're gonna press it down like we did when we test fit it. And voila, voila, there it is. The pin in there with the hook. Hook's not sitting too well, is it? Probably because this is not a very good, this nut doesn't have that top ledge on it. Okay, so we'll have to figure out something else. Maybe I can pry it around a little bit. Okay, there we go, sway bar link nut. Finally, the wheel. Ugh. 
So after a long day and night of working on those control arms, I'm very happy to say that I was finally done. Now, one thing I have to mention is that those Moog parts, it turns out that after driving around a little bit, I realized that it's actually quite a bit stiffer than the original OEM part. So on one hand, it's going to give kind of a harsher ride, but on the other hand, you're going to have a little bit of uh, improved cornering ability. So depending on if you like that or not, you might want to rethink if you want to get the Moog parts or not. For me, it's fine and it was a ton of work, so I'm just glad it's over. So if this video was helpful for you and you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to Kelvin's Garage and I'll see you next time. One of the bad things about working on your car too much are bruises. So rolling around on the floor for a couple hours takes a toll on the body. So you got some of that. And I think my hand too has some bruises. Just faintly, you could see right there.